Um, hi, my name's George, and I'm going to talk to you today about my work, which is trying to identify biomarkers to predict cardiovascular risk outcome for um, juvenile onset lupus patients. I've got nothing to disclose, and no pictures are allowed. So juvenile onset lupus, uh, like the adult disease, is caused by uh, a range of different factors, but ultimately the downstream consequence is a systemic inflammatory response which can result in uh, irreversible damage to, to various different organs. Around 15 to 20 percent of all lupus patients have juvenile onset disease. And we know now that there's a worsened disease outcome uh, for the patients that develop the disease before the age of 18. There's also an increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease that's not explained by traditional cardiovascular risk factors. Another disease, like lupus, that's caused by multiple different factors is atherosclerosis, and this contributes to a, a large um, number of cardiovascular disease. Uh, now, atherosclerosis is the buildup of fats in the lumen of arteries, um, and this can cause a blockage and therefore a heart attack. Um, as mentioned, it's caused by a multiple number of different factors, but importantly, cardiovascular disease is the leading cause for mortality in JSLE patients that's not um, associated with disease flare. Now we know that the buildup of these plaques uh, is associated with fats and lipids um, such as cholesterol, but also due to inflammation. So the hypothesis here was that altered lipid metabolism in JSLE relates to differential cardiovascular risk profiles. And so we combined clinical and demographic information with blood lipid analysis um, through metabolomics. And the idea here was to stratify patients for therapeutic intervention. We used a platform called Nightingale Metabolomics, and this is an NMR-based platform that measures over 220 metabo metabolic biomarkers. As you can see here, um, the different, uh, the different uh, focuses of the platform, but there's a heavy focus on lipoproteins and apolipoproteins. Now, lipoproteins are responsible for transporting hydrophobic lipids around the blood. And they are biochemical assemblies that are largely um, built up of lipids themselves, such as cholesterol, phospholipids, and triglycerides. They also have a protein component called apolipoproteins. There's a conventional model of lipoprotein transport in the blood. The liver produces very low-density lipoproteins, which are converted to intermediate and then low-density lipoproteins. And these express apolipoprotein B or ApoB on their surface. And these can be recognized by peripheral cells and contribute to atherosclerosis. You also have a reverse lipid transport via high-density lipoproteins, and these express ApoA1. And these can return lipids to the liver from the periphery, which can be uh, excreted from the body. Now, this is taking um, data from uh, a large JSLE, so these are young lupus patients. Um, and as you can see, the clinical measures of lipids there's not a striking number of patients that sit outside the normal ranges. And therefore, you don't commonly see um, young JSLE patients being treated with therapeutics such as statins. What this metabolomic platform does, though, is it takes uh, four lipoprotein subsets and breaks them down into different sizes themselves and tells you information about the lipids that they contain. You also get information um, regarding the apolipoproteins, ApoB and ApoA1. Now, we use this platform in two different cohorts of young JSLE patients. Um, and the idea here was to have a discovery cohort and a validation cohort, each of 31 patients. So using metabolomic stratification, we took the discovery cohorts to start with. Now, through unbiased clustering, we used um, individual patient measures of lipoprotein particle measures, as well as ApoA1 and ApoB. And as you can see on the right, the HDL and the ApoA1, the good lipids, have clustered together. And the bad lipids, the ApoB, uh, the VLDL, IDL, and LDL, have also clustered together. We managed to identify three patient groups. Group 1 had a low expression of the good lipids, but a high expression of the bad lipids. Group 2 with a high expression of the good and a low expression of the bad. And an intermediate group 3 that had a low expression of both. So this suggests that perhaps group one had an increased cardiovascular risk. Using conventional measures of cardiovascular risk, 
we confirmed that group one has, has a significant increase in the ApoB to A1 ratio, as well as an increased atherogenic index of plasma compared to the other groups. They had a trend towards an increased BMI compared to the low cardiovascular risk group two, and a significant increase was also seen in group three. Interestingly, we found no striking clinical difference between the groups, other than, um, as expected, the, the lipid measures from the clinic and, and a slight change in C3 between groups one and three. We also looked at the immune cell profile between the groups. Now, this is compared to healthy controls. And in the higher risk, group one, we found that there was an increase in T cell activation and plasma blasts, which are the BM3 to 4 populations seen here. And these are associated with lupus pathogenesis. We also found a re reduction in naive B cells and reduction in CD4 T cells. Group 2 had no unique profile, the low cardiovascular risk group compared to healthy. And the intermediate risk group, we also found this increased T cell activation phenotype. We wanted to validate this in, the, in the, a separate cohort. This was also of 31 patients. And using exact, the exact same analysis from the same lipoprotein measures and apolipoprotein measures, Again, we saw that the good lipids and the bad lipids clustered independently. <coughs> this time, we only had identified two patient groups within um, the, the validation cohort. Group 1A, which represented what we saw from the group 1 in the initial cohort, and group 2A, which represented the low cardiovascular risk group that we saw in the group 2 from the discovery. Again, the conventional uh, risk measures for cardiovascular disease were significantly increased in the group 1A compared to the group 2A, including the ApoB to A1 ratio, atherogenic index of plasma, and BMI. And again, there was no strikingly obvious clinical difference or treatment difference between the groups. When we combined um, the group 1 from the discovery cohorts and the group 1A with the low cardiovascular risk, and the combined the low cardiovascular risk group 2 with the group 2A, and looked at the immune cell phenotype, we again saw this increased T cell activation profile and CD8 T cells, and a reduction in CD4 T cells, memory B cells, and the CD4 to CD8 T cell ratio. We wanted to further validate the cardiovascular risk profiles that we saw in these groups. So we have a unique cohort of adult patients that have been scanned for preclinical atherosclerotic plaque. And this same metabolomic platform is used to compare those patients with plaque to those without plaque. And using the top hits from this analysis, we looked in the young JSD patients. So in the combined group one, we found a significant association of all of these four metabolites, suggesting that group one um, perhaps do have an increased cardiovascular risk, and they may develop plaque as adults. These metabolites um, also correlated significantly with the ApoB to A1 ratio. Following linear regression analysis, where we normalize for demographic information, disease activity measures, treatment, and BMI, we confirmed that the ApoB to A1 ratio was significantly different between these groups, even after normalizing for these. And to confirm its um, biomarker potential, uh, we performed rock curve analysis using the ratio. And as you can see here, we have a very powerful area under the curve of 0.99, and a nice cutoff of 0.42 um, which, was, um, which perhaps we could confidently use in the clinic um, to identify those patients that are at risk. We also looked at longitudinal samples over 12 months at three-month intervals. And as you can see in red, the patients that began with a high ratio tended to stay high, and those with a low tended to stay low, suggesting that it's a stable biomarker over time. So to conclude, um, we took a heterogeneous population of young JSLE patients and stratified them based on their uh, expression of lipoproteins. And we managed to um, find and validate two patient groups, group one with a high cardiovascular risk and group two with a low cardiovascular risk, and an intermediate group that we did not validate um, that have an intermediate uh, cardiovascular risk. So perhaps um, what we could do with these young patients is um, find out which patients do have this car higher cardiovascular risk using this analysis platform and um, subject them to perhaps diet intervention or even a statin treatment to prevent their risk of developing plaque as adults. So with that, I'd like to thank my funders and my group, and thank you all for listening.